Good morning and welcome. Today is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Our presider is Monsignor Tracy. everyone and welcome to our celebration of the liturgy for uh, this coming 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. 
I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. So I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a terrible feeling, isn't it, to be put on the spot by someone else. It makes everybody uncomfortable. But sometimes lines are crossed, another's curiosity is out of control, or the desire to be completely blunt about someone's opinions cause us to feel a little anxious as we are called sometimes to answer questions which should never have been asked. How potentially embarrassing it is for someone to point blank ask, so what do you think of me? How are you supposed to respond to that? We can hide behind the details, for instance, if, if we have a resume in front of us, or a curriculum vitae, and mention professional achievements or uh, other social uh, advancements or other social activities that the person has been successful at. Getting more personal, we can opine on a, another's qualities and remain try to remain as superficial as possible. Or we could describe some relational aspects that we might share with the person, such as, oh, she's my hero, or he's my friend, or she's my beloved. That's pretty much what the disciples were challenged with in this gospel reading for the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time in a place that wasn't very well known to the apostles, Jesus starts asking them questions that ultimately tested their faith in who Jesus was. The critical question, who do you say that I am, comes after Jesus gets a report about what other people thought of him. And in the days before social media, the grapevine relied on what it needed, what it picked up at synagogues or city squares, plus bits here and there of what the women of the village had heard around town. What had they heard about Jesus? Some said he was John the Baptist back from the dead. Some said, popular opinion, that he was Elijah or one of the other great prophets of Israel. Then our Lord yanks them from reporting about others' opinions to ask them the direct question, but who do you say that I am? 
I wonder if the ground under their feet suddenly became more fascinating, that they couldn't take their eyes off it as they pondered a response. Eventually, Peter speaks up, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter hit a home run with that answer. It was so expansive that he could hardly be wrong. The title Christ means anointed, and it referred to a Hebrew king, a prophet, or even a priest. It clearly conveyed the, the idea that the person with the title was one of God's agents. Peter's statement in the name of the Twelve effectively declared their relationship with Jesus that would define their lives for until they died. God's grace was at work in his response. It gave Jesus, too, some assurance that he was believed to be beloved of God and that his mission would find a home in the apostles after he had ascended to the Father. Their faith wasn't resilient enough yet to withstand the storms to come during Holy Week and Jesus' Passion, but it was enough to build on. And in response, Jesus gave Peter the power of the keys. And in effect, he delegitimized the religious elite who claimed full knowledge and competence to interpret Mosaic law. They were, the apostles were to open the doors in their ministry. As a story about apostolic delegation, this episode speaks to you and to me and our understanding of the church today. If we are bold enough to stand with Peter and say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, we are making, in effect, a commitment and entering a vocation to stand with Jesus and with Peter. We consecrate ourselves to no worship of God except the true God, the God of Abraham, the Father of Jesus. And we reject all idols, all idols of power and prestige that come our way. We use these keys to throw open doors that imprison people's lives. Things like addictions or, or scrupulosity or other things that really consume a person. The question, who do you say that I am, might make us feel uncomfortable, but it can also turn the tables and ask us, who do you say you are? Now let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's loving concern for us all, we lift up our prayers now for ourselves and our world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer for Pope Francis, that he be blessed with good health and long life. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations, states, and cities, may they always serve the people in a manner of servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who work in the missions, that God may enable them to do their best in providing for the spiritual and physical needs of those whom they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those caught in the grip of sin may see in the church and her sacraments ways to obtain the freedom that God offers to us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those suffering with the coronavirus, that they may experience the healing love of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Peter Cosenza and Eleanor Campbell, that they may rejoice in the vision of God for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all students and educators that the new school year will be one of joy and growth in the knowledge and love of God. And in a particular way, we remember our seminarians returning tomorrow, or who returned on Wednesday to St. Charles Seminary. We ask uh, that God would be with Declan and Randy during this year and confirm them in their vocations. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, hear these prayers we humbly bring to you. Grant whatever is in your will for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And forgiving are you, 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all souls. O Lord, who gained for yourself the people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, grace we may fully use this we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said, the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with each of our patron saints and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, o Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed coming, the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am a God, you take away the sins of the world, and Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word of my soul to so God be healed. Together, let's now pray an act of spiritual communion, asking God to come into our hearts at this time and that he would uh, draw us to the Eucharist when, it's, uh, when we are ready and when it's safe again to do so. So we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as, you were, as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust us in the hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen and a Hail Mary for the victims of those who are affected by the COVID virus and their families and their friends. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you, Monsignor. Let's be the Lord, let's be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the
the dark of night, nor the 